Hello there. Today we're going to talk about the format of a debate. A debate is basically a structured discussion. So you have some debate formats that are more open, like a presidential debate or a town hall debate where groups of people debate against each other. Or you have debate formats that are far more structured, that carefully tell you how, many, how much time each person has to speak and so on and so forth. Every format has some kind of rules because those rules serve to preserve order and to try to create some balance. The rules don't really determine who wins and loses a debate. Debating isn't about the rules. The rules are there to create balance, to tell people how much time they have to speak and so on and so forth. Right? So in every debate format, there'll be something or some direction about the topics, about the timing, about the speaking order, and maybe a little bit of stuff about the speaking, about the judging criteria. How do you decide which team wins and which team loses? Today we're going to focus on the Asian parliamentary debate format. This is a format that's widely used in Asia among university and high school students, um, and I think it's a, it's a good format for which to learn how to debate. Right? So I'm going to talk about the speakers and the order of speakers, and then talk about the timing, and talk about topic selection, and finally talk about points of information, so essential parts of this format. Firstly, let's look at the speakers uh, and the speaking order, or the teams and the speaking order, rather, sorry. In the Asian parliamentary debate format, you have two teams. One team is called the government team, and the other team is called the opposition team. Sometimes it's referred to as you know, the affirmative and the negative. The names don't really matter that much, but just in order for us to understand the terminology. The government team will always support the topic, and the opposition team must oppose the topic. You usually won't have a choice over whether you are the government or the opposition on a topic. Each team will have three speakers, three in government and three in opposition, and they will speak in alternating order. So first you will have one speaker from the government, and then from the opposition, and then the government, and then the opposition, and then the government, and then the opposition. Each speaker will speak for seven minutes, right? So an entire debate will take seven, 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 seven. That's 42 minutes, right? But hold on. At the end of those 42 minutes, both the teams get to make an extra speech. How exciting is that? It's a, it's a kind of a summation speech where you are comparing the teams and you're trying to persuade the judge why my team wins over the other team. So it's not really a speech where you're making many new arguments, but we'll get into those details later. Hold on, hold on, some patience. So at the end of those six speeches, the government and the opposition at the end, the teams get to make a reply speech. Now this speech is shorter. Remember the earlier speeches were seven minutes long. This speech will only be four minutes long. And remember earlier, the government team started the debate by making the first speech. This time, the opposition team will start by making the first reply speech. So in essence, the government team always starts the debate and they always end the debate by having the last reply speech. Okay, so that's the teams, the two teams, the speaking order and the timing. Right now, now we come to the topic selection. Every debate needs a topic. In the Asian parliamentary format, what happens is you'll usually be given three topics to choose from. So you and the other team can compare and choose the topic which you both like to debate the best. How this is done is teams will rank the topics. So the government team ranks the topics one, two, and three. Opposition ranks one, two, and three. And then you compare your rankings. The topics which you rank third will not be debated. They will cancel each other off. So if the government team ranked the first topic third, the opposition ranked the second topic third, then the first and second topics are cancelled and you will debate the third topic. In the situation where teams rank the same topic third but reverse the other two rankings, then you have to flip a coin to decide who gets their first choice. And you know, if both teams rank the first same topic first, then you debate that first topic. Okay? The only other thing with Asian parliamentary form, and the last part I'm going to talk about, is called points of information. Now, when speakers are speaking, between the first and the sixth minute of every speech, speakers from the other side have the opportunity to rise up and offer a question. So you can say, point of information, can I ask a question on that point, or something to that effect. 
Now, if I'm speaking, I can choose whether or not to accept this interruption, right? So I can say, yes, go ahead, ask your question, or make a statement or a comment. You can say anything you want, but it usually has to be short. It's about 15 seconds long. It's about two sentences, right? So you can get up, you can say, you, know, you ask your question and say your comment, and then I have to respond to it. I don't have to accept every question, but if I accept a question, I must respond to that question. So this adds a huge element of interactivity to the debate, okay? So every speaker, government speaker and opposition speaker, have to have the chance to be questioned by the other team during their speech. You can only ask questions or points of information to the other team and not to your own team. And you should take at least one, preferably two, points of information in your speech. There are no points of information in the reply speech. So only points of information in the first six speeches of the debate, right? Those are the essential parts of the Asian parliamentary debate format. You have the speaking order, the teams and the speaking order, the timing, topic selection, and points of information, right? So teams win a debate by, not by being better at the format, but by making a strong position on the topic, by giving strong arguments to support that position, by rebutting the arguments of the other team, and by comparing each other's arguments or end positions. The format is just a structure that ensures that happens in a fair and balanced way. Let's watch a demonstration debate and see and analyze if, if all of what I said is, uh, is true. It definitely is true. But watch this debate and, and get an example.